on the off chance that somebody specifies the period 1492 to 1800 in Europe, you may believe, Columbus disclosure of the Americas, Protestant Reformation, Shakespeare, Charles II, Scientific Revolution through Isaac Newton, Robert Boyle and C.O., Dr. Johnson and Mad King George III. What you cannot deny is that, at simply when European Christians were censuring assumed barbarians of the Americas as the rubbish of the earth, these equivalent Europeans were gulping pretty much all aspects of the human body as medication. Ummy Mummies for Medicine In the Middle Ages, doctors started to utilize the assortments of old Egyptian mummies for medication. In 1424, for instance, the experts in Cairo found people who admitted under torment that they were eliminating bodies from the burial chambers, bubbling them in heated water, and gathering the oil which rose to the surface. This was offered to the Europeans for 25 gold pieces for each hundredweight. The men were detained. When of Shakespeare, during the 1580s, one Elizabethan explorer recounted seeing the assortments of old men, not spoiled but rather all entire, being every day uncovered from a Cairo pyramid. What's more, a British trader understudy, John Sanderson, illegally acquired a mummy shipment of more than 600 pounds in weight. Drink the red tincture. Well, you may initially need to know how it was made. One should take the body of a rosy man, entire, new without imperfection, of around 24 years old, dead of a vicious demise, not of ailment, presented to the moon's beams for one day and night, yet with a reasonable sky. One should next cut the solid tissue of this man and sprinkle it with powder of myrrh and at any rate a tad of aloe, at that point drench it, making it delicate, at long last balancing the pieces in a dry and obscure spot until they dry out. At long last, a most red color could be extricated from this shrewdly relieved substance. The Vampire Pope and the Vampire Aristocracy In July 1492 Pope Innocent VIII lay biting the dust. One of the supposed fixes endeavored at Innocent's deathbed is especially noteworthy. Three sound young people were paid off by the Pope's doctor, with the guarantee of a ducat each. The adolescents were then cut and drained. Each of the three as of now seeped to death. The Pope drank their blood, still new and hot, trying to restore his faltering forces. The endeavor was not fruitful. Guiltless himself additionally passed on before long, on July 25th. Cannibal Monarchs Here's something you were never instructed in your school history classes. James I rejected body medication, Charles II made his own cadaver medication, and Charles I was made into carcass medication. James was in actuality abnormal in his refusal, and it was to some degree astounding, as he was one of the most nauseating rulers in British history. He never washed or put on something else and was so partial to chasing that he would pee in the seat to spare the difficulty of getting off. Cannibal Aristocrats and Gentry Robert Boyle, the blue blood who got known as the father of chemistry, refined human blood into different medicines around this time, and would now and then offer these to an honorable or polite patient under a bogus name, in case they had apprehensions about gulping blood. He asserted a close to extraordinary recuperation in one case. The Secret History of Human Skulls In the event that you ended up risking upon a human skull in the hour of Charles II, you would likely feel incredible satisfaction, instead of extraordinary dread. A valued clinical product, one single skull could be worth as much 11 shillings, while an untalented worker may procure maybe 10 pence a day. Shavings or powder of skull could be utilized against epilepsy and hemorrhoids, and the king's drops against everything from despondency down to marvel fixes on the deathbed. The Secret History of Human Fat In October 1601, the then Dutch city of Ostend was half a month into the longest attack ever. At a certain point, 
the Dutch baited a gathering of Spanish besiegers into a snare and slew them all. In the wake of rifling the carcasses for resources and arms, a couple of the Dutch could likewise be seen hauling wobbling sacks once more into the city. They contained human fat, quickly ravaged from the new carcasses by specialists. Medical Vampires at Public Executions Visiting Vienna in the winter of 1668-9, the English explorer Edward Brown saw a public execution, the man decapitated while sitting in a seat. When his head tumbled to the ground, a man ran rapidly with a pot in his grasp, and filling it with the blood, yet rambling out of his neck, he as of now drank it off, and fled. This he did, Brown includes, as a cure against the falling ailment. The Secret History of the Soul A large number types of carcass medication were supported by one unprecedented conviction, essentially, that you could swallow the forces of the human spirit by drinking blood, or different refining processes of skull or substance. In this sense, at that point, the whitewashed cannibalism of Europe was insistently Christian. The individuals who drank hot blood at executions may appear to have the most elevated possibility of retaining such force. By and large the criminal was not clearly dead as they drank. As epilepsy was then held to be an infection of the spirit, there was likewise a unique rationale connecting ailment and fix. The Secret History of the Soul A large number types of carcass medication were supported by one unprecedented conviction, essentially, that you could swallow the forces of the human spirit by drinking blood, or different refining processes of skull or substance. In this sense, at that point, the whitewashed cannibalism of Europe was insistently Christian. The individuals who drank hot blood at executions may appear to have the most elevated possibility of retaining such force. By and large the criminal was not clearly dead as they drank. As epilepsy was then held to be an infection of the spirit, there was likewise a unique rationale connecting ailment and fix.